All right, so if you wanted a reason to be thoroughly impressed with Go High Level, I think Custom Objects is a really good one. For me, it was the missing piece where we would have to go outside for a proper ticketing system, proper support system, customer uh, success managers for them to manage this stuff. Um, and I think Custom Objects is what really kind of finished what was decoupling some of this data. Um, so the way that it works is we have a help page here built in Go High Level. Uh, where someone can come here, they can read some docs, they can go to the easy links up here, or they can create a support ticket, right? The support ticket here just has some things that we need to know, and then it goes into some workflows to create a custom object. The custom object, uh, if you've never played with them, when you create them, you get this cool menu link here um, that shows you all of your tickets and everything. You can do a lot of cool filtering. I'm not gonna bore you with all that stuff, but I'm just gonna show you how I built this. So if you wanna copy it, you can. If you wanna elaborate it on it, sure. Or if it's just informational, that's fine too. Um, so if we go over to settings and you go to objects here, you'll see that you can create custom objects. And at first it's gonna be a little confusing because you're like, what the hell is all of this stuff, right? Don't worry about that, just copy exactly what I have. So here's tickets. These are the individual tickets that can be assigned to a contact, right? This kind of finishes the piece of having one contact have multiple tickets out, whether they're you know, complete and old tickets or just open tickets, right? So that's trackable by user. So you can get someone to help the user if they have a lot of tickets, right? Uh, this is where it becomes really, really powerful. Um, but what you could do here is so just call it ticket, plural tickets, and then give it an ID, right? So this is what you'll send in the email. This is what they can check. Hey, can you check on ticket ID X, Y, Z? And then eventually I'll have a page in GHL where they can put it in, press a button, and then get the status on the ticket with all of our notes on it and everything. So we'll have notes and, and stuff. Um, so you can see how powerful these, these really can become for something as simple as a ticketing system, right? Um, so these are just the simple inputs here. And then the association is going to be a contact, or I have it labeled as user, but as a contact, right? So one contact can have many tickets, many tickets can be assigned to one contact. It's super, super great. Um, once you've created that, the other really, really cool thing about custom objects is they can be assigned custom fields. Um, if you look, if I group these by ticket info here, or when you go to create one, like look here, instead of contact, you can create it by ticket, right? So cool. Um, and these are the ones that I have for our ticketing. So we have the ID, which is a unique identifier for that ticket. And I'll show you how to generate that if you want. If you want that, I'll give you the custom code for the UUID. Um, title, description, attachments, uh, screen recording, location IDs, everything in here that we would need to be able to track accounts, things like that. But you do whatever you need here. Whatever you need to uh, submit it when somebody does a support ticket, whatever comes up here, that's what you'll do, right? Um, and you could see those start to populate here. Super, super fun, right? Now, the one thing that maybe I'm uneducated about um, is the, the way these are linked via workflow. So you'll see that when you come here now, you have ticket-based workflows, your regular workflows, whatever. And the difference in these is what triggers them, like the data object that triggers them, where a regular workflow would be a contact and for the ticket-based workflow being a ticket, right? This kind of had a little bit of a problem here because what we wanted was when a status updates for a ticket to be able to notify the assigned contacts of the status of their ticket, right? That became a little bit of a challenge because if you notice or you looked in any of these here, um, so I have mine set up with webhooks, so I'll show you how to do that. But I think it's ticket update here. So the trigger here is ticket-based rather than contact-based. So if the status just changed to whatever, um, and you go down here, it's not like we can say, hey, send a message to, um, or make a call to contact ID, right? There's, there's technically not a contact in this workflow. It's just a ticket. Um, I'm sure I'm just uneducated about how to like properly link those, but the workaround I made for these is just a simple uh, webhook. And I'll walk you through the workflow and everything like that. So let's go to the workflows. So you saw the page where somebody submits a ticket. I'll take you through that one and then we'll walk through this whole flow. So you saw the page where somebody submits a ticket. This is the workflow where it comes in. Um, and so this is how I've set it up. 
feel free to copy it or do something different. So when that support form is submitted, which is the one that was on that page, I add a ticket buffer. Sometimes you get people who love to submit ticket, 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 ticket for one problem that you probably already fixed, right? You probably already fixed it and you just need to let them know that it's fixed or something. You know what I'm saying? You don't want them to just submit tickets. That's how things get messy. So we have a 24 hour buffer. Actually, I think it may be eight, but we have like a 24 hour buffer that says, hey, you can only submit like one every eight hours or whatever. So the way that this works is it comes in here, submits. Our ticket buffer goes through. I'll show you how that works in a bit. And then we generate a UUID. Again, maybe I'm uneducated. There's something already in here for this in Go High Level, but I could drop this in a doc if you want it, but it just generates a unique ID um, for the ticket, right? Once that unique ID is generated, we create the associated record, AKA a ticket for the contact. So this is a workflow action. Let's uh, create associated record or something like that. Maybe I could do it if I just save that there. No, okay. <laughs> Um, but it's, yeah, whatever this one is right here, right? And you notice that you can link whatever um, to the contact. And so the object I want to create, obviously, is a ticket. The ID, which was that unique identifier when we first created the ticket, is going to be my custom code output here, my unique ID that I'm having generated. And then I'm just matching up the title and everything of the ticket, so all the information of the ticket with the actual custom field that got submitted in the form. And again, maybe uneducated, maybe you could put the form um, uh, ticket information in there. This is just the way I did it. Um, and I also, inside of the ticket, I know there's an associated contact like natively, but just to kind of make our use case work, we also just input the associated contact ID. This is how we're able to do the webhook and make the email notifications work. Um, and that's how we just create the ticket just like that, right? Um, I already put that in there, but on this one, so on this is for the contact and this is for the buffer, right? Is uh, a recent ticket ID, I put that in the contact, <clears throat> creating an opportunity, so a pipeline stage with uh, all of their information and we're sending a email notification to the team. Hey, there's a new ticket, go take a look at it. We're sending a text message to the person that submitted the ticket. We're sending an email to the person who submitted the ticket with their unique ID to check on this ticket if needed. And then uh, this was just a safety parameter for some other stuff that we had, which is, um, you don't need to worry about that, really need to worry about ticket buffer down here. So this adds them into a workflow called ticket buffer. And, and you're like, why are you doing that? Like, what is the point in this? So. One contact can't be in a go high level workflow at the same time twice, right? So if someone submits a second ticket, nothing happens if they stay in this workflow. So you could just add like a 24 hour wait as a buffer, right? But then when they submit the ticket, nothing happens. They're confused. We're confused. Everyone's confused, right? Don't want that. So I just created a quick other workflow over here called ticket buffer. And at the end of this workflow, I'm just adding them into Ticket Buffer. All right. And Ticket Buffer is literally just like putting them in here with a wait. You see, there's people waiting in here 24 hours. So that while they're in there, if they go to submit another ticket, we can say, hey, are they in Ticket Buffer? Have they already submitted within a certain time period? And if yes, hey, sorry, you've already submitted one. Just give us 24 hours to work on the one you have. And after that, you can submit a second one, but just give us time on your first request, right? You can see all that stuff in here. And you can even reference, you already have a ticket update with that unique ID. So we already have a ticket for you. Update ticket ID, last most, re most recent ticket number. You can do a lot of fun stuff with this, right? So this is how um, you save yourself from going a little bit crazy here too. All right, so the next thing here is the ticket populates in here. Us as a team get the internal notification. It's time for us to go in there and do a little work. Um, I don't want to, let me see if there's any information in here that you don't need to see. Okay, I just deleted some of the tickets. But when you open a ticket, I mean, this is awesome. You can see the ticket here and you can see the associated contact. If you click over an association, you'll see the contact where you can communicate with them. I'm not gonna do it, their information's there. 
but you can go over there and you can literally talk to them with the push of a button. It's like, oh shit, let me reply, click on contact. Hey, got your ticket info, yada, 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 right? Do the SMS, whatever, because it's with the contact now. Uh, the other thing is you assign the ticket owner, right? You come in here and I add myself here. I can add in some followers so the rest of the team to get updated on some of the stuff. Um, and then notes, things like that, custom fields for notes, whatever, so that we can send updates on tickets in a 24 hour rolling basis using a recursive workflow or based on status. Hey, here's the status of your ticket. It's been escalated. Here's the current note from the team, right? And then I could just view everything, um, you know, at a you know, you know, quick glance, workspace IDs, priority, you know, status of the ticket, et cetera, associated contact ID. So it makes it a really, really, um, really robust um, ticketing system. It's actually really, really good. And um, at the contact level, I'll show you this. This is just my contact here. Um, but you can see all the internal notifications going out. So we're really updated on all that stuff. We have a support live chat, like live human chat too. I can show that in another video, but it's about custom objects. But look at the contact over here in associations. I can see all the tickets. This is what makes it so powerful. This was the missing piece. Like this is, this is it. Was having multiple tickets per person and trackable, right? So I could go in here and we could say, hey, can you go check on... Jordan's account, see what he's got outstanding, make sure everything's good. I can go to a, a CSM and say, hey, look, you have an enterprise client. We need to go check on their current tickets, anything outstanding that we need to do, et cetera. And then we can go in here, right, and, and take these things and create feedback loops for the dev team, et cetera, right? So it's a super, super powerful way to scale up support for, um, you know, contacts that would be customers, right? Super, super good. Um, and you can see the um, information that's coming in here as far as notification, where we can automatically navigate to the contact for live chat, everything like that. So it makes it super, super good. Now, I'm going to get to the workflows here. Sorry, this is a little longer, but uh, I'm very, very excited about it. So this is where things become a little on. And again, I think I'm uneducated about it, where you have a ticket based workflow and you have a contact based workflow and they both have different actions. I can't send a message to a ticket. I have to send it to a contact. So we have this global uh, type workflow here called ticket update. And it's basically saying when we update the status of a ticket, whether it's solved, whether it's open, whether it's closed, whatever we're doing, right? And that's just one of those little drop down things in the ticket. You saw that. That triggers this workflow. And from that trigger, we just say, okay, which trigger was it? And then we go do something else. Now, again, coming from the uneducated part of this, I don't know if there's a, like a, a proper way to do this, but this is just the way I did it is on that status. I web hooked over to a separate workflow um, with the contact ID that I had associated, right? With the ticket. So the associated contact ID, I told you I had that extra custom field with the contact ID and then uh, the ticket ID. And I'll show you what we do with that. One second. Now I'll just show you on the screen. Okay, so you see the webhook we make here. It's just webhooking to another workflow with the ticket ID, contact ID there. We go back and we say, okay, well, let's do something like ticket escalated, right? Or maybe ticket solved. So the ticket solved workflow is a contact based workflow rather than a ticket based workflow. And we're sending over here the contact ID, right? The contact ID and the ticket ID. So that way we can find the contact by the contact ID, right? And if it's found, let's send them an email that their ticket has been solved along with the ID from the ticket, right? And then we can send them all this information. And then uh, at the end, there's create opportunity of like solve for the support pipeline. But this is all you have to do. It's a simple workflow for every stage of your ticket. Uh, I mean, you really should have five. It shouldn't take you very long. So just webhook it over with the contact ID and the ticket ID. Find the contact, send them an email. Um, hopefully that's helpful. I don't know if this is super, super helpful. And again, I'm late to the game on custom objects. Uh, it was a missing piece for me on when it comes to high level. But this is how we've uh, basically replaced Intercom and other third-party ticketing systems that we have. Uh, with custom objects as tickets.
So hopefully that's helpful. Um, I have a lot of other cool stuff that we're doing, like live uh, CSM chats inside of our workspace, things like that. So uh, maybe I'll make something on that too, but shout out to Go High Level. Custom objects are awesome.